we know that breast cancer is increasing. We also know we're seeing more breast cancer at younger ages. We know that there are 84,000 industrial chemicals on the market today, most of which have been grandfathered in, haven't been tested for safety, many of which are known carcinogens. And the argument is always that it's such a low dose, it probably can't be doing any harm. Uh, again, from the perspective of the precautionary principle, I think that the more we can avoid these industrial chemicals, the better. And they show up in our lives in so many different ways. So I'm imagining there are a lot of women on this uh, call, and um, we every day put on moisturizers. We use shampoo. We use conditioner. Uh, we may use perfume. Well, there are chemicals in our shampoos and our moisturizers that are known carcinogens and we're putting them on our body every single day. Fragrances have synthetic musks in them. When they test women's breast milk, they find that over 90% of women have these synthetic musks in breast milk. We're feeding it to our babies. And some of these, again, are known carcinogens. So um, from that perspective of let's be more careful and more cautious, I often uh, suggest that people look at the environmental working group, it's ewg.org, and they've created this amazing website that's called Skin Deep, and you can look up your cosmetic and you can see where it ranks. There's a ranking from zero to nine, and the safest products are at the very low end of the scale. So when I uh, purchase something, um, I uh, we'll look at that and I'll make a decision about my sunscreen or my moisturizer or any other product that I'm using. Uh, just think about how we slather these things on babies. Are we setting them up for problems? So why not choose the ones that have fewer environmental chemicals? And there are companies who are really trying to uh, pay attention to this and provide safer products. Uh, doctor, do you can you suggest a couple products that come to mind when you're talking about something like that, when you mentioned well, the sunscreen or the lipstick? Sure. Uh, let me give you an example. So um, I personally like using body butter. I live in the desert here in Tucson. It's very dry. And um, I was very worried when I uh, went to the website that I was going to discover that I couldn't use body butter anymore. Um, and what I discovered, actually, was it depended which one I chose. So, for example, the aloe vera uh, body butter has a very good rating from the Skin Deep website, whereas if I was going to get mandarin orange, which, by the way, smells wonderful, <laughs> it had a very bad rating. So you can really take a look and make decisions. Um, when I went to the body shop, um, and I don't have any relationship to any of these companies, I'm just using a personal example. When I went to the body shop, I um, found that they were really very knowledgeable about which of their products were uh, cleaner and had fewer environmental uh, chemicals and which had more so that the minute I asked the question they were directing me to the cleaner products and I was delighted to see that, that they're being trained well and they know that. Hi, I'm Dr. Jay Harness and I want to share with you important information that I believe that every newly diagnosed patient with breast cancer needs to know. I'm a breast cancer survivor. I am a breast cancer survivor. I am a breast cancer survivor. And I want every woman to know about personalized breast cancer treatment and the genomic test. A test that helps guide a woman and her doctor to the best treatment options for her. Pass it on.